iOS 3 Raw TV. Well, here's a quick little update. I haven't done one of these in a while. There was really not much going on. I was just kind of maintaining my physique. And then, <clears throat> you know, we started the, uh, the, the trip to Mexico. And um, Aaron and I were down there. We did the ebook, which is now available. And now, when I got home, I got word, and this has been in the works for like a couple of years now, that I will be going to Australia for the Arnold Classic. I am super, super, super excited because I've always wanted to get down there ever since they started it, uh, the Arnold Classic down there. And in general, it's a place I've never been. And to have the opportunity to go down there, Spartan Supps is bringing myself and Casey Mitchell down there. And um, we're, I'm super excited. Now, while we're down there, we're going to do some filming for, um, obviously, Primeval. And um, I was like, I need to get a little bit better shape, a little bit fuller. I was sitting probably, I don't know, about 198, 196. Um with a little bit smoother kind of look, and then I went to Mexico. Now, you guys know what happens when I go to Mexico. While I was in Mexico, I did do my normal Mexican thing that I do. It was a lot, very, very toned down, and I talk about it in my underground. I haven't actually put the video up yet, but it'll be up soon, about what I did while I was down there, and that actually carries over three or four weeks when you get back home, so you notice that I am a lot fuller and thicker, even though I haven't been taking anything here. So, the idea was to look a little bit sharper, bigger, fuller for the Arnold Classic Ohio, then two weeks later in Australia. So I gotta check my weight this morning. So we'll do that right after here because I just woke up literally and um, like I have no food in me or anything. And I'll give you guys a physique update, then an update as to other shit that's been going on because it actually has been a very busy year already and it's only February. So let's do a physique update. We'll do legs today too because we're actually gonna do a leg workout and I'm gonna film that and put that in the back of this. So here's what I'm sitting at, this body weight. Okay, you guys can't see the fucking legs. Anyways, we'll do upper body now. I can tell that I'm definitely thicker and fuller than probably the last time I did an update. Let's see if we can do the legs like this. Fix the fucking camera angle. So a lot of people, you know, they make fun of physique guys' legs, and I don't have the best legs in the world. But they're okay, they're not bad. Not bad for a non-competitive old retired physique guy, right? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and walk, uh, let's go check the weight, and then we'll walk through more morning preps, and we'll get to uh, Rockville, and we train legs out there. Let's see what we got here. Two oh four, first thing in the morning without any food. First meal of the day, as always, we're still going with Nutrition Solutions Pancakes. That's been a staple for like the last, I don't know how many months. Today we're going with peanut butter cup protein pancakes. Fuck, I love these things. So, what's been going on since the last vlog? Tons of shit. Absolutely tons of shit. So, obviously the uh, Australia thing is really huge. Going to Australia, getting that done. I started the BioKicks channel, which is a sneaker channel, which many people from here have already subscribed. It's already got almost 3,000 subscribers. One of the videos has 37,000 views on it already. Um, that's growing really quickly. Um, I mean, there's just so much shit going on over and over. I got uh, you know new sponsorships with MVMT watches, which I'm actually wearing the sport one right now, which I had only been wearing my my iWatch, my Apple Watch, for like ever. And you get kind of like, well, even if you change the bands, it's not really the same look. You guys know I'm kind of into fashion and shit, so. With them, I have a sponsorship. There'll be a discount code down in the description box from now on. Um, I don't get paid as an ambassador thing. It's not like how many clicks you get from that thing I get paid. So it's not one of those, you know, those ambassador things. I mean, they literally have some watches that are, I mean, this is the new black one that I got today. I mean, it is, fu it, they're fucking nice. I mean, hands down, they're really high-end watches for a good price. And, um, you know, Aaron and I are getting both ready to go to the Arnold. And then, you know, another thing that I'm working on since we're going to Australia and... I'm not really sure how this is going to work out yet because I contacted him. So, Lee Priest. Everybody knows Lee Priest. They love Lee Priest. And everybody would love to hear what Lee Priest has to say about a lot of things. So, Muscle Sport Mag, you know, he writes a column for them. I write a column for them. I contacted Muscle Sport. I got Lee's contact information and contacted him. And right away, he was like, hey, yeah, you know, let's, let's do something. However, I can't go to the expos down there. I'm banned from the expos and stuff. And I'm not sure how far away Melbourne is from where he's at which is where I'm going to be. So I said, look, if we can't, you know, link up while I'm down there, let's do a Skype. So he said, absolutely, let's do a Skype. So we get the Lee Priest either interview in person, video coming up, or 
the Skype, which is completely amazing. Like Lee's, you know, I've been a big fan of Lee's for a long time, like forever pretty much. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that I haven't met because he's never at the expos and stuff because he's banned from him. So to be able to kind of link up with him and talk about like, I don't know what we'll talk about. Who knows? Maybe it'll be bodybuilding, maybe it'll be other stuff. Who, who fucking cares? As long as we, we put out some good content, you know, that's all we're looking for. So today what we're going to do is um, we're going to do legs. And I have been doing the time under tension training and it's working really well. As you guys can see, I'm fuller now. I was taking stuff in Mexico. I'm not going to hide that fact whatsoever. That's plain and simple. That's the truth. Now, I will continue that training. It's, it's helping my joints. I still have a problem with my, problem with my shoulder that I'm not really sure what it is. I should probably go to a doctor, although I can touch the pain. It's muscular, so I'm thinking there's some kind of um, you know, inflammation in the muscle for whatever reason. It bothered me the whole time I was prepping last year, so it's not something serious. It's just annoying. And um, I'll show you guys what I've been doing for legs. And it's all I've been doing for legs is the workout you're going to see today, and it's been maintaining my legs this whole time. Like I haven't been had to do squats. I haven't had to do head leg presses with a million fucking pounds. I haven't had to do any of the shit that I used to do. I was doing fucking all that volume and heavy weights and failure on top of taking boatloads of steroids. I don't think my legs are any better then than they are now to be totally honest with you. I think that um, I probably was overtraining my legs trying to get them bigger which is what a lot of people do. They're like oh I'm bigger arms so I'm going to train the fuck out of my arms and what winds up happening is their arms don't get any bigger because training more is not necessarily the answer. So I think today what we'll do is we'll take the uh, the camera to the gym. We can't record and export anymore. Just like Gold's Venice, you can't record there anymore. So now, from now on, if we record, it's going to be in Rockville, fit, uh, Rockville at Ecken Road Fitness. And um, it's just uh, a little bit of a pain in the ass to get there to train. So it's harder for me to get down there and do the, the videos and stuff. But I've actually been asked plenty of times, Jerry, what about a leg workout? I'm like, there's nothing special, but you guys really want to see it. We'll get it done. So let's have this first meal of the, uh, the pancakes. And literally, my peri-workout nutrition, again, huge thing. I, I can't express enough that eating the majority of your carbohydrates around your, um, your workout while you're bulking, if you're training hard enough, it really does help for somebody like me to maintain, um, not necessarily bulking, but to maintain. It really does help to maintain like that because I don't like to eat a lot of food. If I was the type of person I like to eat a lot of food, I'd probably spread them out more evenly throughout the day to try to get more food in. But I don't really like to eat. So I eat before, I take my pre-workout with Intracell, take Intracell in during the workout itself. Afterwards, have a shake, have a meal afterwards, and that's like the bulk of my carbs right there. This has like 30, 30 grams of carbs in it. So I have two meals before I get to the gym, probably have about 50 grams of carbs in me total. Then all my carbs come around the workout. Afterwards, I maybe have the last couple meals of the day, maybe 30, 40 grams for the rest of the day. So for somebody walking around like 204 pounds, that's not a whole lot of carbohydrates. So we're going to continue doing that. And hopefully, uh, I don't know, you guys can see that. You don't have to fucking do shitloads of fucking volume. Like some of these guys out there say, oh, volume, 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 volume. And I'm like, fucking, you don't have to do volume. I mean, I'm not doing volume. Most of my clients don't do volume unless they like to do volume. And we get along just fine. So it is what it is. So let's get this first meal down and let's get to the gym and fucking get it done. Food. Do you eat breakfast? Let me see your muscles. Let me see, look at your waist. Look at that waist, that tiny little waist. Man, you fucking jacked. <laughs> you done eating? You wanna go outside? Do you wanna go outside? Just blink if you wanna go outside. <laughs> All right, we're finishing up some work here in the office. I just uh, was watching or reading some of the stuff that was on the last video I put up about the, uh, the MTV video with the racism thing and fucking... I don't know why the fuck people, I don't get it. You know, they, they come to my page and try to push their views on me and change my mind about the, I, I don't know, I just, it fucking bothers the shit on me. So I just shot another video, which that'll be up soon about people shutting the fuck up about that. That'll be up soon. So we're going to finish this up. A couple things I didn't mention, um, you know, on the BioKicks channel, we have the, uh, the video coming up with the new bread, which I got this weekend. This is the retail pair. This is probably, I think, the one that everybody, even if they think the shoes are ugly, they like these. So they'd be like the bread comparison. And um, I actually got a pair of these early release, which um, that video is already up. That's one that's got like 37,000 views on it. And we just got in the, um, the new Unbroken Loyalty line, which if you see this shirt, the new, you know, you can see it up there on my, my board. 2017, the clothing line I wanted to launch was called Unbroken Loyalty. So I have Unbroken on this arm, Loyalty on this one. And it, to me, has a certain meaning, but overall, I thought that the meaning itself could be a lot bigger to a lot of people like be loyal to your family, be loyal to your morals, be loyal to your values. 
you know, be loyal to your job, be loyal to whatever, and that loyalty should always remain unbroken. Do not let anything come between that, you and that loyalty. You know, I think loyalty is a huge, huge thing in life. So I decided to launch the Unbroken Loyalty line. If you see the, you know, the front and the back over here on the word, the UL, Unbroken Loyalty, and Believe in the middle. Now, believe, believe in yourself, believe in your morals, believe in, again, Unbroken Loyalty, believe, you know, be loyal to your beliefs. You know, I mean, that's, that's where this clothing line is going. And if you look at the U, the L, with the believe, it looks like unbelievable. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to put something together that was like, when people write on the uh, license plates, they kind of word the things differently, spell differently, but you can still read it. So that's the t-shirt. Here's the hoodies that came out so far. And I got about maybe six or seven more designs that I want to get together, get the samples in, and you know, start putting them up before I actually put them out. I think this clothing line, probably more so than the BioStry clothing line, is more important to me because it has not just a message, but it means a lot. And I think it's not just bodybuilding. It can cross over to mainstream too with some of the designs that I'm going to have. So it's, it's kind of a combination of, um, you know, I don't want to say a motivational clothing line, but an expressive clothing line, people to express themselves and reminders. Like we always need reminders. People put post-it notes or alarms on their phone or they put wallpapers on their phones, reminders of things that they're trying to do. And that's what this clothing line will be based on. So I'm going to finish this stuff up right here right now. And then um, I'm going to walk Brady, pack my food, and then we're going to hit the gym and do legs. So hopefully, you know, the gym is not busy. We can get that shit done without fucking. All right, guys, head into the gym, doing legs. Starting off with the leg presses. This is the same leg press that I've been doing for like the last eight years in the same gym. <laughs> but now I don't go as heavy. And you guys can see here, what I'm doing is the four, one, four, one, and then a few reps. Not to failure, because I mean, you're on a leg press, so you don't want to get crushed, even though it's not that heavy. And you can notice as I come down really slow on that fifth one right here, you can notice very slow. And the tension, you can see my face, the tension starts to build up and the fatigue and the lactic acid, it really starts to hurt. Pause for a second at the bottom and push back up slowly. And again, now you go back to the four moderate reps. Right here, you see them squeeze. You can see that I'm actually going really deep, getting my knees up to my chest, pushing with the glutes and hams. Now again, you see me kind of brace, and then I come down again slow. This is actually very hard. You wouldn't think it is, but it's very hard. The idea is to overload the muscle and not the joints. So you can overload the muscle and then get out of the gym now. Again, I'm doing this to maintain and not to try to stimulate new growth. So. It's completely different. If you're trying to build muscle, I feel like you do have to train heavier and heavier in order to get the body to adapt. But I mean, you can still train this way with heavier weights, but um, I've noticed so far, you guys have seen my physique, it definitely um, is able to maintain doing this style of training. Now, you'll see this one, which is my last set. So this is the fourth set of leg presses. I only filmed two. So I did three with the muscle time under tension. This one is a full set of slow negatives. So you see it goes slow all the way down, pause, and then squeeze back up. When you reverse direction on the, uh, the the press right there, it's really, really hard to push with just the quad. So like your hamstrings, glutes, everything activates to get that weight back up. And as soon as you get to the top, I try not to lock my knees out. Although right there, I'm resting. But as you see, I start to push down or let it go down slow, slow, slow. You can see my face actually turning red. Squeeze back up and then right back down. So there's a constant tension on all the muscles of the lower body. And actually, you know, your abdomen is contracted. My arms are contracted. I mean, it's more of like an isometric contract, and it's not like a squat, but it still is a pretty, uh, you know, energy exerting exercise that absolutely hits all the muscles in your legs, and it gives you a nice little heart rate boost at the same time. So three to four sets there. We do want four sets there normally, and then we move over to leg extensions. Now, again, with the uh, first three sets of leg extensions, you'll see the same thing. We'll go up for four reps, two. Nice and easy. Three and one more. Four. Now you notice I start at the bottom and then slowly reverse direction. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze all the way to the top. And this is already killing. Like your legs are very fatigued already after the leg presses. And then pause for a second. Squeeze and then down slow. Really letting that weight fucking hang there. It's hard. You, you think that this is like the easiest thing because of the light weight, but it's, it's really not. It's actually super painful. Especially when you get to the third set of these. Very, very painful. You don't really adjust the weight. You keep the same weight. So it's not like you're dropping the weight as the sets go along. If you're maintaining the same weight, and as the muscle's fatiguing, it's still trying to pull the same weight. It's extremely hard and painful. Then moving on to the final set. So this would be the fourth set. Again, same thing as um, before. So, I, or the leg presses, rather. So the third and final set. You can actually see my legs starting to swell up now through the sweatpants themselves. As you squeeze up, down slow. 
again, and it's not a super explosive contraction on the way up. I mean, it is not slow, but it's not super fast, but it is a controlled um, explosion on the way up. Contract at the top. You'll notice as I go along, it's, it's harder and harder to actually keep it at the top with that pause. And it is, I mean, you can see my face turning purple over here at this point. <laughs> and um, I mean, it's painful. Like your body just cannot flush that, that lactic acid out fast enough. And I usually rest about, I don't know, maybe a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, whatever it takes me to catch my breath again before launching into the next set. But again, the idea is three sets of the muscle time and the tension and then one set of the slow negatives. And at the end of it, what I'll try to do is on a leg extension because it's like the single joint movement, I'll try to kind of rep it out at the end a little bit to failure. It's a little less dangerous than getting crushed in a leg press. And that would be the last set of leg extensions. Then we move on to hamstrings, which I do the seated ham tractor or seated leg curl because the lying leg curl actually hurts my back. Um, I don't know what the problem is. It just, it always has. And the one that we have, like if I let, use the flat lying leg curl, it's fine, but the angle one that we have at this gym, it doesn't, it just hurts my back. So again, four reps. Then on the fifth one, you'll see me squeeze down, 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 all the way down, contract, hold it for a second, and then back up. And on the next round of these, for the next slow, and you'll notice I can't get the weight all the way down because the hamstrings are starting to fatigue already to the point where you can't fully contract them. And it's going to be this rep right here. You'll see I squeeze down, 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 squeeze, 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 and right there. And I can't really hold it and it goes right back up. Again, these exercises are not for building mass. They're for maintaining the muscle mass that I have and um, alleviating the joint pressure and pain so that I don't wind up fucking myself up anymore, which... You know, you get that mindset, go harder, go heavier, fucking animal, you know, go heavier, go home. And, you know, then you wind up like a fucking crippled by the time you're 30, which is, you know, like Ronnie Coleman, two hip fucking replacements and all that shit. And then the last hamstring exercise here. So I already did three sets of the uh, muscle time under tension. Now this one, again, you see it's hard for me to actually pause the weight at the bottom now because the hamstrings are really fatigued. So I also notice when I do leg presses and I do them deep my hamstrings really take over. Like my hamstrings are actually better than my quad development and always have been. They're a stronger muscle group. They're um, definitely a more endurant muscle group, but they wind up taking over like when I squat and um, Brady jumping on me over here. Cut it out, buddy. <laughs> Let me squeeze them down nice and easy, up slow. And by the time you get to the last set of these, I mean, your legs are pretty good. I mean, they're fried. So by the time you get to here, you've done basically 16 sets for legs, or 12 sets for legs. And um, they've all been either slow contractions or explosive contractions. So they technically are hitting different muscle fibers technically. But by the time you get there, your legs are pumped, they're fatigued, they hurt. And then I move on after every single workout and I do four sets of rope crunches. It's hard to see with the shirt on, but I'm actually crunching like a round of broomsticks. So it's not like straight up and down. The abdominals are actually crunching. And I do this because I don't do squats anymore. So hope this uh, workout was a little more interesting for you guys and we'll see you guys later.